We all know that feeling when you miss home. Life can give you all these opportunities to move across the world, to visit places, to make new friends and start a new life anywhere. But the truth is, well, you always miss your home, the place you grew up in, the home in which you dreamt your best dreams and in which you looked into the mirror and saw yourself as a superhero. The place where you fell and your dad quickly came to pick you up and comfort you. Yes, all these memories started to come back to me. My name is Ryan and I've been living in a big city for around seven years now. I moved here due to my job. I was hired right out of college and since then I've been handling large accounts and offered financial advice to wealthy businessmen and companies. But as the time went on, I felt like I needed to disconnect. I needed to take a step back and maybe take a break from this corporate lifestyle. I've been on holidays, don't get me wrong, but there's always something missing. Each time I would close my eyes so I could relax and the image of my childhood just came to mind. That's it, I have to go back there and see the place. I kept thinking about it, so it must be the right thing to do. I said to myself while looking at the ceiling from my couch, I didn't visit my childhood home because, well, my parents passed away there. They were both sick and after it all happened, I just sold the place. I don't know why I did it, maybe just because it had so many memories and I wanted the pain to go away. So I haven't been there in a long time. I wonder if they still kept the garden gnome, I asked myself while still being on the couch. The next day, I hopped into my car and I started driving. I had a strange feeling about the entire thing. I don't know why. Maybe because of the memory of my parents, but still I kept driving. While I was sipping on my coffee, I admired the beautiful landscape. I was outside the busy city. I was nowhere near tall skyscrapers and the chaos a large metropolis produces. Everything was quiet. I was in a countryside and I couldn't feel anything but relaxation. Finally, I said to myself while I entered my hometown, everything looked, well, sad. I didn't remember it like this. It was like somebody put a filter on the entire town. Not only that, but it seemed like everyone was inside. There were no kids playing around. There wasn't anyone walking their dog. It seemed deserted. After a couple of minutes, I reached my home. Is this it? I said out loud while I stopped the car in front of a house, which seemed to be the one I grew up in at the same time. It seemed different. It looked in pretty bad shape. What the heck happened to this place? I once again said, but this time, while well, I got out of the car. I took a moment and I looked from afar. I couldn't believe that my once beautiful and colorful home would be in this kind of shape. After a deep breath, I started walking towards it. I looked at the front lawn. It wasn't green or healthy like I remembered it. It was dry, dead, like the rest of the house. I continued walking and I reached the front door. I tried to check if anyone was there, but there wasn't any noise coming from the inside. So I knocked and then again. Come on, I said before knocking a second time. No one answered me, so I just decided to take matters into my own hands and I opened the door. I slowly turned the doorknob. The door squeaked as I pushed it. I took a few steps and I looked for the light switch. I quickly found it as I remembered it, but well, it didn't work. I flipped it and nothing happened. So I went towards the windows so I could draw the shades. This place needed some light. But as I did that, I immediately regretted it. Who's living here? I said while looking around, shocked. I saw packets all over the floor. I don't know what was in them, but they looked pretty strange. They were wrapped tightly in some transparent foil. Also, besides the packets, I saw different containers of various shapes and sizes. I decided to investigate and see what was really going on, so I went outside the house. As I went into the backyard, I saw that the door was basically hanging on from a single hinge. This place really went downhill, it's nothing like I remember it, I said before turning around and paying close attention to the other houses in the area. They looked in really bad shape also. They looked abandoned and the once beautiful and full of life neighborhood in which I grew up in now was a ruin. All of a sudden, the sound of footsteps startled me. I turned around and took a few steps back. Stop walking on my grave. A man started shouting as he was walking towards me. As I was walking back, I stumbled upon a rock and I fell to the ground. The man came closer. He had his face covered in blood. His clothes were so ripped and old that they barely hung on him. He looked, well, half dead. Stop walking on my grave. He continued to shout as he was getting closer and closer. I snapped out of it, got up and I put my hands in front of my body. Stop! 
What are you talking about? I asked him, but before he answered me, he reached towards his back and he got out an axe. You don't want to do this. I tried to reason with him, but the man started running towards me, swinging the axe like a madman. Fearing for my life, I ran to my car. I put my keys in it, but it didn't start. In no time, the half-dead man reached my window and started swinging his axe once more. He was hitting my windows as I was trying to start the car. Stop it! Go away! I shouted while the man kept saying something about his grave. Finally, the car started, and without wasting any time, and even without looking in my mirrors, I just pressed the pedal and managed to get out of there. I succeeded in escaping, but my heart was beating at a hundred miles an hour. I stayed far away from that town for a couple of days, but I still wanted to know what happened. I refused to believe that it was something supernatural or anything of that sort. I managed to call the police department and tell them about what happened to me. And then a guy with an axe came running towards me, I explained. Yes sir, the truth is that place became a drug den, a crack house. That person with an axe must be one of the addicts. It's their way of scaring people away so they won't be disturbed, the police officer told me. My home, the place I grew up in, it became a drug den. After I got the news, I just stood there for almost half an hour, being melancholic and just thinking about the past. Did you enjoy the first story? If you did, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Oh, if you want your broccoli to be served fresh, then don't forget to hit the bell icon. Keep munching. It was not supposed to be the wildest day of my life. In fact, I woke up that morning with butterflies claiming their usual space within me. Just like every other time I am to see my boyfriend, Sean. We had been dating for three months and just the thought of seeing him brought me sheer delight. I slept late, thinking about how we were going to spend the day. Even though my parents allowed me to have male friends over, there was no room for privacy of any sort. So, driven by a strong need to explore, I came up with a grand plan. One that kick-started the series of crazy events that happened that day. It was a very bright day, a Saturday, and anyone that paid any attention would think I was trying to outshine the sun. I put on a vivid yellow dress sitting just above my knees. It was the perfect dress for how I felt that morning. At 11 o'clock in the morning, Sean arrived at our doorstep looking cool in a gray t-shirt and denim trousers. He gave a boyish smile before saying, Hello, Marine. Hi, stranger, I said, flushing all over as his eyes ran through my appearance. After about an hour and a half of switching between playing Scrabble, watching TV, and trying to stop my mom from interrogating Sean, I decided to set my plan in motion. I told my mom I wanted to see him off, but I would stop at a friend's place for a few minutes while coming back. Now outside the house, I disclosed my plan. I informed him of an abandoned house at the end of our street and told him we should go there. I searched his eyes for any hint of disagreement. There was none. Instead, he said, Sounds adventurous. I didn't know you had that in you. Oh, there's a lot to unbundle. Do you think you can handle it? I said, trying to tease him. He nodded and laughed. The abandoned house, almost the size of a mansion, was rumored to be owned by an oil and gas syndicate who got involved in an exposed financial crime. As we reached that place, we entered through the rear door. Shortly, we found our way to the bedroom. The bed was twice as big as the one in my parents' room. As we started kissing, Sean suddenly stopped me and asked if I had heard something. I said no. I asked him what he heard and he told me to be quiet and listen. I was starting to get scared. Was someone in the building with us? He asked me to wait while he checked out what was going on, but I disobeyed and followed him. He did not say anything as we entered silently into a big luxurious bathroom that joined the room with another room. I heard voices that kept getting clearer until the door was opened and I heard a loud scream. Sean peeped through the door and a couple of seconds later, he opened his mouth wide. Then he quickly covered it with his right palm. At that point, I was terrified. I peeped through myself and saw two men with knives and a third man in front of them on a chair. One of the men started carving his chest with his knife 
while the poor man kept shouting and pleading for his life. We know you escaped with loads of money while our boss got stuck in the scandal. Don't even try to deny it or we will cut your heart out, said one of the henchmen. Sean whispered to me that we quickly needed a way to get out of the building. I didn't see any way to do that without the two men hearing us. We could still hear all the drama unfolding at the other side of the door. The poor man finally called his wife and asked her to bring the gold over and also to make sure that no help in their house would know what was going on. I hugged Sean and felt his chest pounding hard beneath his shirt. While he was not showing it, he was scared too. We decided to wait it out rather than alert the henchmen and get ourselves in trouble. Moments later, the gunmen started yelling. They were getting impatient. And then I thought of my mom. If I did not go home soon, she would start getting worried. I brought out my phone to check if she had called. I made sure to put my phone on silent mode. At that moment, I heard a loud scream and a wave of terror hit me and left me shivering. I looked at Sean as he was trying to get a grip of his breathing. Then we heard a woman cry. They killed the man in front of his wife. As I saw the man's body lying on the floor, I felt a rush of rage running through me. I texted my mom and explained everything to her. I told her to get the police there as soon as possible. She replied to me almost immediately. Please stay put and don't do anything stupid. I'll get the police there now. I showed Sean the text and he looked a bit relieved. Let's have fun with this woman. The first man said to the other. Yeah, then we finish her off too. The second guy responded. I whispered to Sean that we should try to save her. Sean said that it was risky and any one of us could get hurt. I couldn't let them violate the woman. I looked around and saw a piece of log on the floor. I picked it up and looked at Sean. He understood what I wanted to do and sighed before collecting the log from me. We opened the door, suddenly startling the men. In that moment of hesitation, Sean swung the wood like a baseball pro and knocked one of them out. The other man looked at us in anger. With his knife in his hand, he rushed towards Sean. Sean froze and I screamed for him to run away. The man smiled because he knew there was no escape for us. Suddenly, he oh. jerked forward and collapsed on the floor. My jaw dropped as I saw a knife plugged in his back. The dead man's wife had taken her revenge. As we heard the police sirens in the distance, the dead man's wife gestured us to shush and ran away. It has been a few months since the incident and Sean and I are still going strong. Sometimes, I think about that woman and thank her for saving our lives.